Welcome back to my channel for a very interesting Hasselblad episode. And you see here in front of me on the table my Hasselblad X2D 100C and the lens mounted is the Hasselblad XCD 120mm macro. Hasselblad just recently released new firmware for the X2D camera and if we go here into service we see this is version 2.0.0 and this firmware comes with a lot of additional features. I'm planning to do a full tutorial on all the new features very soon, but for the time being, one of the most important features of the new firmware is focus bracketing. And in this video, I wanna explain you everything you might wanna know and need to know to use this new feature, very effective in your shooting. And in particular useful is it of course in macro photography, that's why the lens mounted here is the XCD120 macro. Let's kick off the video. The game plan for this video is simple. First of all, I wanna explain all the menu entries and parameters you can tweak under focus bracketing and I will do this in a live demonstration so you really see live what's going on and what different parameters mean for you. Then we want to go a little bit into theory because Hasselblad in the manual has posted a lot of information about this new feature focus bracketing and I want to make sure that I explain everything that's going on in the manual. And then third, I want to do a live shooting with some dried up flowers in the house and we'll show you how this really looks like if you start with a single frame and then start to stack more than 600 frames into an image which has the widest depth of field you've ever seen is super sharp corner to corner. There are various ways how you can come to the parameters for focus bracketing or focus stacking. And one way to go there is by pushing the menu button and then going here into drive mode. By the way, I think drive mode is the right place for focus bracketing and it's very logical because it's sitting next to exposure bracketing. Or you can also, like always, with the touch display of the X cameras, just swipe down here and then you get here into drive mode. And then if you tap on the right hand side where the separate window here is, there's a fine line in between. If you look at that, if you tap again, then you can start to tweak your parameters. And the first one is step size. And here we have extra small, small, medium, large and extra large. And Hasselblad recommends in the manual, if you wanna have high quality focus stacking, go for small or go for medium. And we are going deeper in a moment to explain what that all means. Then the second parameter you can tweak here is the number of frames and the minimum you need for a stacking of course is two, but then you can go up to 1000 frames. Let's call that very quickly. And that's end of story and that is plenty enough. So I actually did shoot one sequence with 800, but then I needed only about 600 frames and that worked quite well for me. The third parameter is initial delay. Initial delay is a self timer, you can say none and then the sequence kicks off immediately the moment in time you push down the shutter release button, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, up to 60 seconds. So you have a lot of options here where you can choose from. The fourth parameter is exposure delay, and that is the waiting time between consecutive frames. So if this is at one seconds, frame one in the sequence is shut, the camera waits for a second and then shoots the second frame and then waits for a second and shoots the third frame and so on and you can go here up to 16 seconds of delay between consecutive frames, or you can say there is no delay at all. I typically have this at one second, and uh, although the leaf shutter in the Hasselblad X system lenses is not causing a lot of shakes and vibrations, I personally feel more safe if I have a one second waiting time between consecutive frames. So let's take this to one second. Then we have sequence here, and we have three options here. Towards infinity, I'm going to illustrate this live in a moment towards near limit and symmetric. And all three of them have their justification why they found a place in the menu here. So as I said, I will cover this in a moment in detail. And then the last parameter is very simple. You have here when finished and you can say stay. And that is if you wanna do several focus bracketing sequences, then you don't want the drive mode to switch back into normal or you go into exit. And then whenever the sequence is shut, and all the frames are on your compact flash card or in the internal SSD, the drive mode will go back to where it was before and that's typically the normal drive mode in the way we have it here. Let's go there on to single for instance and uh, then you don't accidentally, if you take your camera out of the back and head before some time before, let's say a focus bracketing, then all of a sudden you're in the wrong drive mode. So then it's better to choose here exit and make sure that you end up in a drive mode you're comfortable with. Otherwise, as I said, 
If you want to repeat the focus bracketing, go to stay. Simple like that. On shooting parameters for the following sequences, I will be on an aperture of f8. That is on a 120 micro lens, still a very shallow depth of field, an ISO of 100. I will also be in aperture priority. Normally I would recommend for a focus bracketing to go for fully manual mode, but here there is no problem to have it in that way and we'll play with different entries in the menu now to get a better understanding of what they mean. All right, let's play with some settings here to see what's going on in that focus bracketing menu. So let's push this, let's go here to drive mode and let's go into the settings. And I wanna go first for step size extra small and compare it with extra large and the sequence I'm going to choose is towards infinity. So let's focus here and I focus at the closest distance I can have to the camera here. You can move the focus field by pressing and holding on the front bottom side, the focus mode button. And you see then I can move it up and down here or also in horizontal direction, but I wanna go to the very bottom here, which I reached. So let's focus and let's kick off the sequence. Here we go, countdown is counting down from five to zero and then it starts. And uh, as I said, we have 30 frames and step size is extra small. By the way, whenever a focus bracketing sequence is done and I have pressed the shutter button, the focus returns to where I started the sequence, which is here at the very bottom. You see that? It always comes back to that. It's hunting forth and back a little bit, typical for Hasselblad XCD lenses, in particular for 120 macro, but it's fine. Let's now change here in the setting uh, the step size and let's go here on the step size to extra large. So we go here to extra large, that's it. And let's kick off the same sequence and then later look into the differences. I let the camera now do its job and take the sequence. And then I wanna compare side by side the extra small and the extra large steps in that 30 frame sequence we are currently shooting here. This is the first frame on both parameter settings, extra small on the left hand side, extra large on the right hand side. And clearly there's no difference because I placed the focus field which is indicated here by a red rectangle in both sequences at exactly the same place. You see also nicely here the shallow depth of field despite that I already stopped down to f8 because a 120 millimeter macro lens on a medium format camera has a very shallow depth of field even if it is stopped down to f8. Watch now in a little animation how extra small step size compares to extra large step size if I stack the respective 30 frames in Helicon Focus. Impressive animation, isn't it? And you clearly see what's going on if you look at the different step sizes here, extra small versus extra large. And these are the final frames, not really beautiful, but they, I think, serve the purpose here. And you see that the depth of field on extra small is much, much smaller than the depth of field on extra large. And that's the difference you see. And all the other settings under step size play somewhere in between. You can easily interpolate it. Let's now try something different. Let's go into focus bracketing and uh, let's go here to, I think here we should go to medium. And uh, let's go now and look into the different sequences here. So we have towards infinity and that's the first one I'm going to try out. And I also will increase the number of frames here now and we'll go to let's say 150 frames. I think that should do the trick or let's go to 200. No problem. What we don't need, we throw away later on. And uh, let's fix this. Let's go back into focus. And uh, let's start the sequence from here. And let's see how this plays out. So we are going for sequence towards infinity, 200 frames, and we are on medium step size. Countdown is counting down again from five to zero. And then the sequence should kick off. It always shows me here that I'm in medium step size. And it also shows me the progress with a bar and the number of frames already taken. Let's now change the sequence and let's go again into the menu here and let's go on sequence from towards infinity to towards near limit. Let's choose this one. Let's go and focus again. And what I wanna do now is I wanna move the focus field to the upper end of the frame you are seeing here in front of you. So let's press and hold the focus mode button and let's move this up here. 
Let's then focus at the top. And let's kick off the sequence. Here's a live illustration and demonstration of focus shift and if sequence is set to towards infinity, then the first frame has a focus point set closer to the camera and then focus gets shifted away from the camera towards infinity and infinity focus is the hard stop of course and whether you get there or not depends on the number of frames and the step size you've chosen in the menu. If the sequence parameter is set to towards near limit, then it's kind of the opposite story. The first frame has a focus point sitting more far away from the camera and then with consecutive frames focus is shifted closer to the camera towards the camera and a hard stop of course here is the near limit or minimum focusing distance of the camera and again how far you get in that focus shifting procedure depends on the number of frames and the step size you've chosen in the menu. For best results Hasselblad recommends in the manual to go for a step size of small or medium and in the example I'm going to show at the end of the video, a real life example, I actually went for extra small step size. And then it's also recommended to shoot more frames than you actually need and you saw in my case here I went for 200 frames that were way off too many, I didn't need them all so I did throw a lot of them away but it's better to have more frames and the full coverage of the depth of field you want to achieve than finding out later that the number of frames chosen was not enough to get you that wide depth of field you wanted. Last but not least we have here in the settings symmetric. So let's go here to sequence and let's say we go now to symmetric. Let's go to focus again and in order to illustrate best what that means I want to move the focus field again. So let's press and hold here. Let's move it down let's say to the middle of the frame about here. Let's focus and let's kick off the sequence. Alright we'll have a look in detail in a moment when the shots are done. Symmetric sequence is in my opinion a very interesting option and I'm going to play the clip of the recording from a moment ago a bit slower so that you can watch live what's happening if you set the sequence to symmetric. And the scheme is the following. For the first frame you should focus and place your focus field on the main subject in the scene. That gives you one safe shot for your main subject. And then for the second frame if you set the sequence to symmetric the focus field will be moved closer to the near limit of the camera and will then kick off a towards infinity sequence and it will shift the focus in consecutive frames towards infinity and again you get as far as the number of frames and the step size you've set in the menu are allowing for. Here's the animation again generated in Helicon Focus and for the first frame the focus should sit on the main subject in my case for illustrative purposes I've chosen kind of the middle of the frame, I've scaled up the representation here a little bit. For the second frame the focus jumps back towards the near limit of the camera and then it starts a towards infinity sequence across the whole frame. Before I show in Lightroom the real life stacking example I already showed at the beginning of the video, let me make a few remarks and add some things which might be useful to know in that context. So first of all We'll see this in a moment. If you shoot with a macro lens like 120mm in the Hasselblad X system, even if the lens is stopped down in terms of aperture, the depth of field can be very shallow. Focus bracketing and then stacking the frames of course can extend the depth of field in a way I'm going to show in a sample in a moment. Here are a few things you need to know. For focus bracketing, XCD lenses need firmware 0.6.0 or later. For the XCD 45P, it's a special case, it needs firmware 0.1.26. Hasselblad HC, HCD lenses, you have seen them from time to time on my channel, can unfortunately not be used for focus bracketing with the X2D. For the new XCD V lenses, for instance the XCD 2.5 90V, you need to pull the focus ring which switches between autofocus and manual focus to the rear of the lens so you are in autofocus setting, otherwise the procedure will also not work. And uh, if you connected your camera with focus software on your computer, your Mac or on focus mobile on your mobile device then the in-camera focus bracketing is disabled when the camera is wired up or connected via Wi-Fi. Now this is a single frame here shot in the way you have seen it at the beginning of the video. It's with the Hasselblad XCD 120mm macro lens, has an aperture of f8 so it's already stopped down but the depth of field is super shallow. So if I crop in here you see at the boundaries of 
of the flower, you already have a fuzzy image. It's only sharp in the center and that happens even if you stop down to f8. If you stack the image, and this is, I come back to this later, stacked with 602 frames, you get sharpness corner to corner and a full depth of field, a wide depth of field from the front where you had your focus sitting on the first frame until the very end. And uh, that is of course something you might want to achieve or have. So if we put these frames side by side, left hand side a single image, F8, on the right hand side a sequence towards infinity, step size extra small, 602 frames. The difference between these images couldn't be bigger. And of course you don't have to go for 600 frames as in my case who cover the whole depth of the image. You can also keep a certain blurriness in the background as you see on the right hand side by choosing just 170 frames out of the 602 frames which make up the left hand side image. So if I take less frames but starting with the first one I can still keep some three-dimensional pop in that image, but get the flower super sharp. As I said, I'm going to show you the incredible amount of sharpness in a moment in Lightroom. Hasselblad has updated the manual for the X2D100C with the new firmware, and they have dedicated a whole section on focus bracketing, which in my opinion is done very nicely. And they give a lot of tips, tricks, and hints, but also some educational material, which help you better to understand what's going on if you shoot such sequences. And the first point to mention is the step size should be small or medium size because if in particular if you shoot at the close up distance and even if you have stopped down like in my case to f8 the depth of field will be very shallow and it can happen if the step size is chosen too large that in a particular shooting situation there will be unsharp areas in the stacked image and that's of course not desired. On the number of frames rather go for more than for not enough frames because you can throw away frames easily later on. And in my case, I did shoot 800 frames. We come to that in a moment and kept only 602 because they were enough to cover the depth in the image. I wanted to be sharp and in focus and all the other frames I just did throw away. No problem with that. And then you should experiment. So it took me seven different sequences and every sequence contained several hundred shots before the stacked image matched my quality expectations. Hasselblad has included a nice educational section in the manual on focus bracketing and depth of field. And uh, clearly the X2D calculates in camera the step size in dependence of the chosen step size parameter. That's why you have this parameter in the menu for tweaking it. But it also incorporates of course the focus position, the focal length of the mounted lens, the chosen aperture and the pixel dimension of the sensor. And the focus position coming to the first point here is clear because if you're in close up distance, your depth of field will be more shallow than if you focus on something more distant, like in 10 or 20 meter. The focal length of the mounted lens, of course, plays a role in that context. The chosen aperture, smaller aperture or stop down aperture means you have a wider depth of field already. And the pixel dimension of the sensor is 100 megapixel for the X2D. And of course, Hasselblad mentions this here because the predecessor, the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, has focus bracketing already since the firmware upgrade in 2020. Specifically on the focus position, Hasselblad also includes in the manual some nice illustrations here. And uh, what they say and also illustrate here is, and it should be known to pro photographers, the depth of field increases with increasing distance or focus point from the camera for the same aperture of course. So if we compare like for like and the depth of field also increases unevenly. So not in a symmetric way with increasing distance of the focus point from the camera, which means in other words, the depth of field on the far side of the focus point will grow more than the depth of field in front of the focus point if you increase the focusing distance. And they have nicely illustrated this in the picture in the manual. So let's say you focus on a closer distance, namely position one, then your depth of field, because this is closer to the near limit of the camera, is almost symmetric, but not perfectly symmetric. You still see more depth of field on the right hand side here than you have on the left hand side. And right hand side means the far side of the focus point and left hand side means the front of the focus point. And uh, if you now increase your focusing distance to let's say focusing distance three, then you see already here that the depth of field becomes very unsymmetric and there is much more depth of field on the right hand side. So on the far side of the focus point than what you have in front of the focus point on the left hand side. 
nicely illustrated, but of course known to photographers anyway. The last piece of information Hasselblad gives us in the manual in the section on focus bracketing is a relation between the step size and the circle of confusion in a table, which you see here in the lower right hand side corner. And the way you need to think about the circle of confusion here is kind of the level of ambition you have of the perceived sharpness or acuity of the finally stacked image. And that is a highly technical topic. I have a tutorial on circle of confusion in a video I uploaded quite some time back. And I also reference here the timestamp where you find this particular section on the circle of confusion and I will link the video down below in the info box. The only problem I have with that table is that the numbers are wrong. And the reason is that they reference here the pixel pitch for the Hasselblad X2D 100C at 5.3 micron. And that unfortunately is wrong because 5.3 micron is the pixel pitch of the Hasselblad X1D Mark II and not the pixel pitch of the Hasselblad X2D as you find here in the data sheet of the X1D Mark II. So they messed it up and mixed up the cameras in the table and in this way all of the numbers are wrong. The pixel pitch of the Hasselblad X2D 100C actually is 3.76 micron. And also this information is available in the data sheet you can download from the Hasselblad website. And that means you have to correct all these numbers and uh, just for your reference I've calculated them here. So you can look them up and don't rely on the wrong table. I'm sure Hasselblad will update in the near future the manual again and provide the correct numbers. But be warned here, don't work with that table because the numbers are just wrong. The last topic I want to cover here before I go into Lightroom and show you the stacked image with all its beauty and sharpness is hot pixels. And shooting focus bracketing sequences for a prolonged time leads to, first of all, a warm camera body, you can feel it in your hands, and second, quite a hot sensor. And it's normal that the sensor, if it gets hot, then in random places exhibits some hot pixels. So that is something we see with all cameras and the Hasselblad X2D is no exception here. And I've talked about hot pixels already in a Hasselblad X2D video some time back when I looked into long exposure shootings at night. And I will link this video down below in the info box. You can already see here that if you go for long exposures for a prolonged time, you will get hot pixels. And that's what also happened to me with my sequence shooting here because shooting seven sequences and every sequence has several hundred images, of course warms up the camera and the sensor gets more hot. And uh, I've tried to magnify here one hot pixel in one of the frames. I'm not sure if you can see it on YouTube, but in the middle of that red square here, you see one green hot pixel in the magnification level I've chosen here. And if you then stack the images and have it in every image of the sequence, it creates unfortunately hot pixel traces. And that is quite visible in the image, even without magnification. And is of course a completely undesired effect. So what can you do about that? Now, first of all, if I have hot pixels, for instance, from my Leica SL2, when I shoot long exposures, my tool to go to is Capture One. And in Capture One, there is a single pixel slider and you can put it at a level of five or 10, 20, 30, what have you, and check still the image quality of your image after post-processing. And then these hot pixels will get hexed away in a very nice way and you don't have to correct them one by one, which is a very convenient procedure, of course. Unfortunately, Capture One does not read and accept Hasselblad RAW files. And that's a never ending story between Hasselblad and Phase One. So Capture One does not accept Hasselblad RAW files and Focus, the software from Hasselblad, does not accept Phase One images. And uh, if you want to import into Capture One Hasselblad RAW files like you see here on the screenshot, you will see that if you click on the image, Capture One actually recognizes the image. This is my image here, which I shot. But if you then click on Review for Import, it will not be imported and there is a notification saying that there are no images in the folder. And that's of course quite annoying. Now there are two options what you can do to fix hot pixels. And the first one is you import all of these 100 frames or how many you have shot into Lightroom Classic and use the healing tool in Adobe if there are only a few hot pixels. If there are many of them, this is absolutely tedious. I cannot recommend doing it because you will sit forever. In my case, I only had about 
seven or eight hot pixels in the image and then it's very easy to correct them with the healing tool in Lightroom and then copy paste the corrections to all the other frames. The second is you can import the sequence of raw images into the Hasselblad software Focus. And Focus has a feature which automatically recognizes hot pixels and removes them completely. And then you have it all in one go. You don't have to use the healing tool. The hot pixels will just be gone in the frames and then you can export them again for the stacking procedure. So that is what you can do. And let's now look into real life shooting. And you see here, I actually did shoot first with a medium step size and 300 frames, then with a small step size and 400 frames. And what finally did the trick for me was 800 frames with extra small step size. And then I used 602 of these frames and did throw about a couple of hundred away because I didn't need them for my depth sharpness in the stacked image. So the final settings you see here in green, 800 frames, but using only 602. As I said before, rather choose more frames than what you really need. Extra small step size and in terms of the sequence parameter, I did go for towards infinity. If you like this video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.